everybody. Here we go. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 15 of the podcast. Today what? is December 9th, 2020. I am one of your hosts, Nick, aka The Wild One, and joining me, as always, Chris Kodiak and DJ Mike. This is High Input Games, where we cover all the news that you need to know about. But before we get to that, let's do some housekeeping. If you would like to support the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash high input games where bronze level subscribers can get the show ad free and silver level subscribers can get access to the post show where we talk in more depth about the things you're about to hear today um this is a big one guys finally cyberpunk 2077 is upon us after 10 years of development 15 years of owning the trademark name this game is here and i want to know what you guys think of the initial surrounding um uh, reviews that have been sitting around this game go let's get right starting with you mike oh you're gonna hit me first well you know Got me you. i'm uh i i'm 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 a little more of a you gotta impress me you know i'm not just yeah. gonna come out there and say that you look pretty if you don't come out and actually look like that you know it's just it's just not what i'm gonna do so I, that I Brittany? Think, i think <laughs> i think we're looking at i think we're looking at, <laughs> stop it i think we're looking at a fantastic game with too much hype that's all that's all there's nothing there's nothing wrong with the game now let's not say there's nothing wrong with the game because there are bugs we know there's bugs but as far as the game it's going to be an incredible game no doubt is it going to be the best game on the planet? No. Is it going to live up to the hype? Absolutely not. It can't. Nothing can. This is touted as the greatest game ever that you've wanted forever, that you've just never played yet, that's been delayed, that's that's here. It, but I, I just don't see how anything can live up to that hype, and I've been saying that. I, I completely game. agree with you. I completely agree with you. We have breaking news, everybody. The download has resumed. Oh, my God. Oh, there's <laughs> resumed. You're spotting the line. Um, um, Mike, I agree one with everything you said to there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, I'm a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Um, 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 Mike, I, I want to dial it back a little bit. I agree with absolutely everything you said, my guy. Um, I, I got caught on the hype train. <laughs> Here it comes. I was singing on the back of it, you know? Everyone did. It's, but it's just... My question to you, and this is a question that I heard earlier today from a different media outlet, so I appreciate this. Do you think that as reviewers and as, um, as people that are exposed to the game early, um, not necessarily us as a media company, but do you believe that the responsibility falls on these people playing the game early to manage the, our expectations? Or should we as gamers manage our expectations ourselves that's good marketing um, that's a good marketing wow. question right yeah that's hard i mean it's their job to make it as powerful as they fucking can and they is. did of course it of is. course you know. my question is is if if you were allowed to play it early and it was a really good game is it up to you i mean i would say, i would argue that if it is a good game when you play it you're just reviewing on what you saw right if you don't have the full game in front of you and they give you a 20 minute slice and it's very very good it's hard to say that your time and experience with I, such a game was bad. You know, I don't even know that they touted it that, that. I think everybody took Witcher 3 and said, how can this game be anything but better? Mm -hmm. Right? I, I, I mean, I that's what everybody I was agree. expecting. It's a game that's futuristic, cyberpunk, but better than The Witcher. And and I, I don't know that, are we looking at a game that's better than The Witcher 3? Playing, playing it almost twice through, would you say that this is... Better. Do you think it's going to be better? You know, what I, you know what I think is better is not really the word I've been looking for when I've been getting excited. But to, de to, to nullify my expectations, is this game going to be different to The Witcher 3? Okay. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Are you going to get to sure. experience a game that is well-crafted, that blends this, the elements? Chris, I'm going to get to what your thoughts are. I can see you're ready. You're nipping at the heels. I'm good. Um, are we excited to see the blend of a Fallout universe with a Grand Theft Auto universe and see how well a story can be told in a universe like that. Because to be fair to Cyberpunk, to say it's not a revolutionary game, I don't know any other Fallout style game that allows you to have motorcycles, vehicles, access to a large city without loading screens. Even Fallout 4, Fallout 3, um, 
uh, even games like Outer Worlds all keep you on a fairly linear path. I know that they're open world in the sense that you can go and do anything in any direction, but nothing has really been this like, welcome to Night City, jump in a car, go explore, go over here, go. The, the idea that they've blended things that we really enjoy from the two universes, like Fallout, I, I believe it's really been uh, attributed to like Fallout, Grand Theft Auto, with like splashes of, um, oh, I forget what they said. I forget what I said. Um, Chris, let's go to you. What do you think about this? Uh, okay. What are your so, expectations? So my expectations are high. They're they're pretty damn high. Witcher 3 was one of my favorite games ever played, ever made. I think CD Projekt Red is one of the greatest game development companies that has graced our presence, in all honesty. I think Rockstar is the only one that gives them even a close to a run for their money. Maybe Santa Monica, you know. But I think... Um, I think with that said that uh, sometimes you can peak in high school, you know, and, and that doesn't mean that because they made The Witcher that we should expect The Witcher again. Do I think we're going to get something better than The Witcher? Of course, it's going to be different. Um, it's an RPG. I think they know how to make a really good RPG. Uh, the fact that they pivoted to a first person shooter, I'm curious how you can get the depth and the, the, the I guess the immersion factor. I know you're You'd likely that seems counterintuitive because you would think immersion would be would be wow that scared me I thought that was in my house um uh, you would think immersion would be stronger with a first person shooter but uh, there's a lot of things with a third person adventure that you can kind of get a little bit more feel for your environment and I'm I'm curious how that plays out um and one of the things obviously that we've been going back and forth about is obviously the length that's been you know revealed over the last couple of days the fact that the game is a can be beaten in 17 to 25 hours um if played straight through uh now of course that's without any side quests and you know an rpg is not meant to be played without any side quests however i am of the belief that if you're trying to pander to a group of people that doesn't technically like to play rpgs is the game going to give us the gratification of the depth that we can expect with something like the witcher that took us 65 with barely any sides and i think your playthrough was like 110 hours with the size yeah, that you played time. you know um now i mean that so we're not talking about anything no, in heard, the same ballpark I have heard. I have heard 80 hours with all side quests with the storyline without doing any of the gigs. Now, without any spoilers, I believe gigs are going to be a tie to Johnny Silverhand because he's a, an old style rocker. Right. But from what I heard that you're looking at an 80 hour game if you go after all the side quests and all of the, the single player. I actually got a chance to get my eyes on the game today because um, my brother had access to it on the Xbox Series X and he able to do the trick with the New Zealand Switch, region switch. So we were able to have a quick look at what Night City oh, looks like. It's Xbox Live ID. <laughs> right? And um, <laughs> when, you're, when you're playing this game, it's really, 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 really good. It looked like there was a lot of pedestrians on the street. It looked like there were um, a lot of cars. It looked good. And this is on the base version, Mike. This isn't even the version that you mm -hmm. and I are going to get yeah. to play after the podcast. Not the upgraded version on the Series X yet. Yeah. <clears throat> Not until um, next year. They had, um, which I find interesting, that anybody would go back a year later and almost six months Hold later. On. And Can we play. back that up? What do you? I didn't hear anything about this. So there's a different version for the PC compared to the console? upgrade. Like, like, all right. So last night, Destiny Two released their Series X, their their next gen console upgrade. So my game last night, I logged into my Series X, which, yeah. <laughs> talk about into, after this i logged into it and there was uh, a thing that said upgrading for destiny 2 it was like a 60 gig upgrade that it was doing to the game to upgrade it to uh, be able to do up to 120 fps at 60 base but 120 fps in um multiplayer um and uh are there any yeah, pedestrian so enhancements or anything like that any kind of like uh like live action enhancements where there's more pedestrians on the street more cars on the road or anything like I'm that or? i have to imagine that there are yeah i would imagine that that patch will increase density of traffic will add i mean ray tracing is not on anything other than the pc right now not even on a series x it's just not it's that's that incredibly will be the disappointing that comes out that's the version that you'll get next year um so I'm very interested to see how it runs. I know it's running fantastic. I heard 1080p on a 1060 graphics card, they're getting 40 to 50 frames. I'm hearing fantastic things about people running it on a 1660. 
uh, 2080 and 2060 running away with it without ray tracing. Uh, same, honestly, with the 2080 Super and 2080 Ti. You can put on the ray tracing when you get into 3070 and 3080 territory, but the game is supposedly beautiful, even without ray tracing. Uh, and the fact that you can run it on Ultra with the 2060, 2070, 2080 tree with the, with the DLS technology in 4K. That's They're telling you you can run it in 4K with a 2060, uh, let alone what you'd be able to do in 2K with an ultra wide. I mean, I'd imagine is we're still D- going to be hitting ultra. Is DLSS available right out of the box for us? I, I believe I didn't, so. I actually didn't Let look me, that up. I'm going to look it up right now. I am Jonathan. very disappointed in the fact that if there's a population density uh, update and enhancement for the PC version, I may want to see if my no, PC no, 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 runs it. No, 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 no. No, the PC, oh, I was going to say, yeah, oh. The difference between even what the Series X is getting right now and the PC version is going. I get quality wise as far as like graphics, as far as ray tracing. Yeah, Mike. Six hours ago, six hours ago, GeForce Game Ready Driver adds NVIDIA DLS boost to Cyberpunk 2077. That's amazing. Yeah, so that's we great. are literally going to be achieving 120 <laughs> plus frames at 2K. DLSS isn't available though on RTX. the 1060. Yeah. That's the GTX cards, right? I never knew what their mm-hmm. names were, but yeah, he's got a GTX yep. and this is an RTX feature. I'm really going to have to make that jump here pretty soon, I think. I think that's in but the But it cards. does blow my mind that a 1060 right now, let me look it up while you guys uh, cover the chat for five seconds. Well, Mike, it, hmm, I'm curious. So I, I will I be able... Uh, nah, I'm, I'm not going to buy it. Valhalla ran like shit. I can't imagine that this game's going to run at any kind of decency if I can't even play well, Valhalla without being it's optimization, buddy. It's all in the company. Yeah, yeah I mean, I was going to say, how did the how did the Shadow Gun run? Or Ghost Runner? Quite honestly, pretty damn good. Yeah, uh, good. Valhalla runs like shit for pretty much everybody. So, I mean, it's it's just optimized real bad. Hmm. It's those damn big companies, man. Ubisoft and fucking EA. Look, look, the experience I, of playing Cyberpunk 2077 is. through a G... Hold on. The experience of playing Cyberpunk 2077 through a GeForce 1060 3 gigabyte is going to have uh, FPS of around 32 frames per second. That result is taken with high graphics and a screen resolution of 1080p. If you so that's, must, that's resolution... exactly what I'm getting on the PlayStation, but in yeah, 4K. Exactly. Not in 4K, but yeah. in... In 10 in 1080p, 1080. but you're just getting the the, the PC you, I, version. Is it, is it 1080p on the PlayStation or is it 720? No, it's 1080. It's 1080. On the PlayStation. Is it 1080? Yeah, and and I uh I have it stable. You know, like what's gonna piss me off and what's happening with Valhalla is sometimes it'll be punching 45, <laughs> but then sometimes it dips down to 12. You know, and it's like Bro, on the PlayStation. Try it again after they fixed it. It's nah. really good now. And the PlayStation never sure, does that. Tried. Never. I, I, you know? I was going to say, I would be interested for you to try Valhalla with the updates that have come out for it. I almost turned yeah, it on today. Was, I didn't mine, get around to it. Mine but I was want to. unplayable uh, until a couple of weeks ago, and then it's just so good now. Like really Red good. Dead was Red Dead was terrible when it first came out on the PC. Like, nothing could run the damn game. And now it's, right. it's so smooth. I was shocked the other day when I jumped into it how smooth it was. It's the yeah. power of updates. And somebody also said, I saw somebody, that that picture I put of the boys storming the Braithwaite Manor, that was somebody in that chat we're a part of, that group on Facebook, and they said that, oh, can you believe how good Red Dead looks on a 1080 <laughs> graphics card? And I was like, dang, dude. What? Yep. That's nuts, man. No shit. That's good to know. That's real good to know. I might have to just spend the 60 and see how it runs just for the hell of it. I kind of. Well, I would wait to see how it runs on your PlayStation. But my biggest concern, and this is something that we should pivot to briefly, is that there have been no review codes sent out for console versions of this game. Kind of Funny received one review code for the PC, which they gave to Blessing. IGN received one review code, which they gave to their reviewer. It doesn't seem like there have been any console codes out, which leads me to believe is the console broken? Is the console, is the PS4, is the Xbox One, they talked about having problems. Or we, there were well, rumors for this delay were because of I mean, the console not being up to scratch. We know it's buggy. We know, mm-hmm. like, that's, there's no question about it. We well, know that the game is buggy. We know it's got a lot of problems. Does it have more problems on that hardware? Because it's... I can report of two bugs that my brother's experienced since he's been playing this afternoon. One 
was when he was lift. Uh, he, there was a guy lifting weights up on the side of the road. He wasn't lifting anything, and the weights were on the floor. But by the <laughs> third time he put them down, and like then did another animation. When he went to pick them up that time, then they actually picked them up. So he had obviously clipped through the object and mm. wasn't moving it. And it's then just he said rushing. there was. Yeah, that's just uh, an animation glitch. And then I think he said there was one other thing that. Uh, was very very minor and he said honestly other than that i haven't experienced anything yet and he's been playing for like five hours so and he's playing without the patch if you can believe it i would assume because unless they gave the patch to i'm assuming that everyone got the patch as soon as it went live right i don't think so man yeah It'll consoles got the consoles I get the day one patch because... Yeah, but oh, I but the patch that isn't out yet. Trigger. Right, right, right. For I'm exactly. sure they would have launched it when they legally launched it in New Zealand, though. Yeah, alongside I guess that, would have. Yeah, that's what I think. I think so. I was. That's what I was asserting too. That it would have been a patch release for everybody. Um, the last thing they want is people playing it and saying it sucks. And they're I like, oh, just wait I twelve hours. <laughs> I should have bought the game on GOG instead of Steam. To you be get those because it comes. You, you don't need to VRM have you, it's regardless of the server that you're playing it on. You don't need to have it on GOG. No, he said something else then. No, what did you say? The DRM reason free. why is because everything on GOG is DRM free. So you don't run into problems with oh. something that has to like check in online or authenticate the game or any of that shit. Hmm. It's that's like buying that's... a disc, right? Mm hmm well, I kinda yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, okay. So there are initial impressions of Cyberpunk right now as we're getting ready to roll out. Uh, with the Cyberpunk 2020, um, Cyberpunk 2020, Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> Feels like 2020. Uh, 2020 has been a wild year. <laughs> Feels like yeah. 2020. Yeah. Stop. Um, <laughs> that's great. Um, now we now we're getting a good idea of what people think of the game, and I've got uh, an idea of what your guys' uh, expectations are. Uh, Chris, you've confirmed you're playing on a PS4. Base. Mike, you've confirmed you're playing it on the 2060. Um, 2070 super oh shoot 2070 it's 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 nukeman that's got the 2060 that's right mm -hmm. so and even so yeah even he'll be fantastic if he wants to play it so yeah i'm assuming that uh that that basically with everything in in consideration that I'm trying to think where i want to take this topic i mean honestly i really really think that like you said managing expectations is what's important here not going into it with too much of a hot expectation um, we know enough about the game to uh, go into it blind, but enough about it to know enough. Chris, you're still starting as a nomad? I'm definitely starting as a nomad. The biggest question I'm having right now is how big am I going to make my penis? And that seems to be a pretty big point of contention right now with a lot of us. Well, Mike, I hear you're going I, I, for double yours, so four and a half <laughs> inches on the on the guy in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I me so much credit. Yeah, it's one inch. It's one one inch game. around. Micropenis, <laughs> but the richest micro penis man in the game. Yeah, is what I'm going. Can for you do that? Can you just go with like the smallest dick imaginable? On I your wonder if you can adjust the width. Yeah, because I want a super wide one. Just make a chode like, like a canned beans, <laughs> straight a pepperoni beans. slice. That picture of Chris's character, bro, I about spit my drink out. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I showed that to Brittany. She laughed her ass off. That's, yeah. That's yeah. So are we funny. gonna? Right, and Mike, uh, are we gonna go play on. as so girls? Do we, do or... we need to use this thing, or is it just for show? Yeah. What is? I mean, is it just to to in, be inclusive? Uh, is it an inclusivity thing that they made the? They oh, were so I bet focused? there's I bet there's some dialogue around if you got the small one. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, what's up? And she'd be like, it's cute. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty legit. I mean, I kind of want to see uh, what the differences are. I think that's my biggest point about the... <laughs> this is Chris's biggest idea. No. I want to see the differences between how people react no. to my penis. <laughs> no. That's... i 10 years for this. That's not what I said. What I'm saying is that I'm excited to see the differences in the playthroughs. Yes, depending on your genitalia, right? Why did they even include that on the character customization menu if it's not just for inclusivity? But the if there is some sort of gameplay attribute accounted for based on your genitalia, cool. It's the sexual but, relationships but, you can have in the game. But not not because you can have sexual relationships I, and partnerships. I for sure. That's cool. But I'm not saying just about the genitalia. I'm saying that the the 
just all the different aspects of the game that can be different. I'm kind of excited the fact that it's shorter than we expected for that reason. Because again, if it was The Witcher, I'm not replaying The Witcher to see all the different endings. You know, no chance in hell. But if a game's only 35 to 45 hours, because I'm probably not going to push an 80 hour playthrough. I'm not the kind of gamer that like runs through the game like a vacuum cleaner. You know, I'm really not that guy. But I will, if I meet somebody, I think they're cool. I'll go hang out with them for a bit. If I think they're annoying, I'm not going to play that mission. You know, I'm going to go on to the next one because it's not necessary necessary so that's why i'm a little disappointed with needing to do the side quest because i am the kind of gamer that likes to be forced to do it because i will take some shortcuts if i'm like not really feeling that i person. knew that you i know? knew that yeah, when but, you were having such a hard time with the yeah. side quest not being forced i'm like he needs his handheld yeah it's he not it's not just a handheld you're right like, past because here if they're, until you're done if they're if they're not good with their introductions to a character Right, like say we've the, already talked about say, how they've confirmed that most yeah. of the side quests are better than the regular. That's quests. That's, that's good, but I'm saying that what if the introduction isn't well written, right? So like in GTA, one of the more memorable missions, and it was a bad mission, right? But I still remember it was Tina in GTA with the tow truck. I didn't think oh, yeah. that mission was great. You remember it? I know Nick remembers it. We talk about it frequently. Y'all right? just remember it because right. it was the first side mission in the game. Uh, but maybe, but but it was bad. You know, it was so a bad GTA mission. GTA Four, right? No, that was five. five. Um, but the that five? That was five. It was oh, not man, a good mission, like it but it was a memorable the one. The backstory that you got <clears throat> right. on Lamar as a person from that right. mission was fantastic. When you Gold. learned that he had a crackhead cousin, <laughs> yeah. and the forever. crackhead cousin yeah. didn't yeah. want to do the towing anymore, mm -hmm. and how she kept flirting with him, yeah. and he's like, I don't like you. Get off See, of me, Tina. And she's like, oh, you too good for me now? That whole... <laughs> Backstory, That's, I think, was fantastic. I agree with you. My point being that if Tina's mission was not necessary <laughs> upon first meeting her, I wouldn't have done it. Right, because I'm not driving a fucking tow truck all around for the next 25 minutes. I'm not minutes. sure you finished all but, of uh, uh, Tina's missions anyway, but I think that I they made these missions different to uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, in the sense that those missions feel like filler missions where these are full no, story arcs. but that's not what i'm these saying are, i'm gonna... saying tina's mission was important to Tina's learning... missions were only yeah, they were to learning the character truck driver mission sure right? but so every time you went to see her you knew what you were going to do another tow truck job you don't know that with these mm -hmm. side missions maybe because they not, are but... different I mean, no, no, I, it's not. Maybe not. This is confirmed. There isn't just like you're running around. Yeah, but maybe there's they a guy that, like you, like we saw on the IGN review, a sentient I, a vending machine. Like I'm gonna do that one because the guy brought it up on the review, and maybe that mission has some sort of bones as far as character backstory is concerned. That or, mission will be like a Witcher know. three style mission Maybe. where that guy was underneath the but, grate and he was moaning at the poor people but above. I'm, I'm saying the that side, kind of funny thing you the, stumble upon those when you're walking through a important. casino uh, a, a, a vending machine I'll be like hey loser come over here and you have the choice <laughs> to go talk to it or not right, right. but it depends it's not that hard but it those missions are living. good I think what they decided to do was allow you to live in the city and what you like you told me yesterday on the phone you have choices every day you have a choice to stop at McDonald's, but you don't. You go to the next restaurant. Oh, you have a choice to go. It's not you... Tina. It's Tanya, by the way. Tanya. He's right. Thank you for that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You have a special job to do. Every time we do something wrong, put it in the chat. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, but what I'm saying is, is that um, these missions are going to be diverse. They are going to pull you in. Um, and I do believe that you're selling yourself a little bit short if you say that. Uh, just the way that they introduce a character might not not might we don't even know any of the characters yet. You know what I mean? These characters are going to be interesting. I, I'm just using it as an example. Well, if they make I one, agree. if I they agree. write one shitty introduction, and I'm like, ah, that guy's kind of annoying. I don't really want to go. You know, maybe he's some guy who picks up coke cans on the street, some homeless guy on the side of the road, and he's picking up coke cans and wants me to go help him pick the up. The funny coke thing cans. is about mission about video games, I've always found that that first mission that you're like, who is this guy? Turns out to be like. We're building a UFO in his garage. That's like, right. They are that's, always the weird ones. But those are the best ones. You know what I mean? And that's where yeah, I'm like. Yeah, so right. don't, they, they, like, don't miss any. Don't you know? sleep Just on it. Just you take your know? time. Don't sleep on it. Like, again, going back to what I was saying before is that, like, the world is supposed to be uh, something that you're living in. Like, so you wake up in the morning, you go downstairs. There's a guy selling a newspaper. AV, hey, come over here. You look at him. I'm going to go over there. I've got stuff to do today. 
I kind of do want to go over there. I'm going to walk over there. You're supposed the reason you can create your own version of you is because they want you to live in the city with overwhelming choice. Remember when that game de demo we saw was all about choice? If there's and and IGN did confirm that there is that amount of choice even in the side missions. So my theory is why wouldn't you if you know that like oh my gosh i can like betray this person if the chance comes up i can rob this person i can befriend this person like when you start to realize all of the other underlying yeah. elements why would you even think to ignore it you know it's cd project red no. they've already <laughs> proven themselves go you know by, by far the game is about depth right because that's what this game has is a, a, and a lot of depth and I, choice is this going to end up being a game of the year? I think it's going to be a lot of people's game of the years. A, a lot. So? I don't know if it's going to win a uh, game of the year. I know that breaking news, the, the People's Choice Awards for the Video Game Awards. So you know that when the video games are voted on, it's 90% the critics, 10% the um, fans, right? That's how you get your score for these video game awards. But they do have one award, which is the People's Choice, which goes to 100% of the fans. Ghost of Tsushima was the winner of 2020 from the fans. How crazy is that? That's wild. That's awesome. I, like, they were gonna have to buy that. Two, and Ghost of Tsushima went up <laughs> and down, and right I'm at the end, Ghost to. took it. Yeah, we're going to have to work yeah. that out. Get it. That's crazy. So I thought that was a really unique thing, you know? And do I think this will be in Game of the Year? I think it'll be a lot of people's Game of the Years. I think that if you have the right expectations going in, um, this is like Fallout 4 but in uh, a modern world setting, you know what I mean? Like, and Fallout 4 was fantastic. It wasn't groundbreaking. It wasn't fundamentally different to anything else you, to Fallout 3. Uh, it was just really good. And yeah, I think that if you go into this thinking really good, I think you'll be fine. Even blown fine. away, maybe. Yeah, Yeah. I, I think I've think i heard the gunplay is great. Blessing at ALA Jr. said that the gunplay in this game was some of the greatest stuff in the game and that the driving wasn't excellent but it was great for what it was right so it's not quite grand theft auto 5 but the driving is on par with how you would expect it to be in a video game like this i have a question um any yeah. oh damn i can't even ask that question shit never mind never mind i'm not gonna ask that is question it a spoiler it's not a spoiler as much as it's a spoiler for a much older game and it, how it may tie into the game that we're about to play what game huh uh okay. the witcher <laughs> i think that game's been oh, out for long it's enough fine i, I agree we it. talked about this chris yeah we've given everybody enough time to turn away if you haven't beat the witcher yeah you've got five four three two one spoiler territory here we go yeah okay go. so i i'm i'm curious do you have any expectations to see siri in this game in any capacity at all. I don't think so. I think it would have no. leaked already. I think it would be out. That's there. what. That's the one leak I was terrified for. I'm like, I yeah. if I see a picture of Siri in the in Night City, I'm gonna throw my phone out the fucking Whoa. window. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm yeah. gonna be so pissed. You know, but um, so it's not probably sure not about, there I'm at not all. About thing theory. What I am excited about, and this is something that's been overlooked, is that CD Projekt Red are very, very respectful to their fans, and they understand that a sixty dollar game is 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 a huge ask when there are other games you can buy they're very aware that you could spend your money on assassin's creed and they're very aware that there are other games out that call of duty that are going to be on sale around christmas that you could pick up for cheaper so i do love that cd project red um focus heavily on giving you free dlc and we don't even know what that dlc is yet and if they're telling me that we have two 10-hour DLCs that take you deeper into Night City after I've gone and plugged in 35 hours with all the side quests and everything else, I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, they, I'm not saying they will be free. I know they mentioned about free DLC, but when they did that with The Witcher 3, that meant like, we'll give you free armor sets and we'll give you free, you know, in Cyberpunk, free access to cars, but like... Hearts and Stone and Blood and Truth were paid DLCs that were around 20 to 30 hours a piece extra to, for you to play on top of that this game. That would be incredible. And they've already said they have really good DLC. So pay attention to everybody you meet in this game, even the smallest people that might give you a cell phone and then you don't talk to them for the rest of the game. Anyone who does a favor for you and you owe them a favor, wait for it. CD Projekt Red are really good at that. They they will leave like a, don't worry about it. And then 
DLC comes along, this guy that we thought was really cool that we were squared away with will be like, I got a favor to ask from you now. And uh, they're really, really good at that. So pay attention to everybody in the world. And if that's not more of a reason to want to finish the side quest and, you know, you get to yeah. the end of a side quest and you meet some crazy professor and then the DLC is about that crazy professor and you're like, yes, yes. You know what I mean? It's, it's exciting uh, to see what's to come from this game. They've already announced multiplayer in two years. We don't know if the multiplayer is co-op. We don't know if it's not co-op. We don't know what kind of multiplayer it could be. So it's exciting. And I think we need to give CD Projekt, Ru uh, CD Projekt Red a bit of breathing space. Uh, like Mike said Agreed. earlier, that it's not necessarily... They didn't set out to make the greatest game in the world. They never said that. I don't see it anywhere... Doesn't, it doesn't have to be to be a great game. There's yep. no reason that it they needs to be They never said this is going to be better than The Witcher. They never said this is going to replace Geralt. They never said this is going to be a smash hit. They just said we're making a first-person shooter in the future, and it's going to be in the cyberpunk universe. And people were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They See, started you know worshipping them over, over them course. making a fun first-person shooter, and they were probably wondering, like, what the what fuck is, is going on? Like, we're just trying There's to make a, a cool following. game. You know? Yeah. But... Yep. And I wonder if they'd have had so many delays if the expectations weren't as high as they were. Kind of glad. Every glamour. E3 that came no. around, the expectations climb higher, and they got to add more, and they want to add more content, but now they want to get the game looking more beautiful. And It you know, was I kind of an organic thing... growing, dude. It was very organic. I mean, marketing was great, but it was an organic, over the years, slowly, this this surge and I have, people. I have, they started uh, making the game eight years ago I, I don't know that that's much of a shock right i mean eight well, years I, ago the success you, of the witcher, the, i mean the success of the witcher 3 wasn't even complete yet and and you know halfway through that development witcher 3's gained so much success that now their expectations on this game are huge you know totally. uh, so so it's definitely been my, very dynamic my question to you is um, we have to we have to assume that the development shift halfway through the making of this game, when they realized that the hardware was going to be available for them to make this for on sure. next gen, they had an idea that we could probably get this out. Uh, they made it. We're making it around the same time that The Last of Us Part Two and games like that were being in development. So it was assumed yeah. that this was going to be a last game on the PS4, a big swan song. Somewhere yeah. along the lines, they decided we're going to have to scratch this and go to next gen as well as current gen. I wonder mm -hmm. if some of the things that they had sure. in the code at the time no longer work when they were trying to make it a I'm larger, sure. bigger, shinier game. I'm and sure. so development and time has been cut in half. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm sure there is. You know, when, when you're in a crunch like that and, and, and something comes up, you know, they're like, all right, well, what's more important? Do we take care of this massive issue or do we just leave some of that stuff over there? Or do we take mm -hmm. care of that shit and let this bigger issue linger that may stop us from from finishing the game in time? You know, it's just like the issue with the, it the should weights. be. You know, that's something where they're like, uh, leave that. It only happens to 15% of users if they get out of the car at this time in the game and blah, blah, yeah. blah, that, you know? So, and they're like, we'll go back later and we'll fix that in another Yeah, has anybody enough. lost the save? Is anybody having game-breaking yeah, issues? It's Any of those it's things? Unimportant. The code right now for that game, I'm sure is an absolute mess. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm just sure it is. I'm sure there's some- However, cards. not broken. I don't believe not, that you have any broken. problem where you're gonna lose your game file. I don't think there's any issues with you getting to a not certain yet. point in not the game. We know of. Well, this I game's mean, I, like a spider web, man. You can't really be sure of that. Yeah. You make one wrong yeah. choice certain, and you go off into some dark corner and you're done, you know? Like, that's it. Some, some, some certain things that have to go together just perfectly, you know, one out of a million people will get the problem. <clears throat> well, a pro tip Something. that I would advise for anybody uh, that playing uh, an RPG is to have multiple saves and mm. be okay with your multiple save files just lingering there because it is always nice if you do run into something game breaking to go, you know, oh, I have something from 30 minutes ago. That's so much better than I got to start 30 hours ago or 15 hours At ago the or beginning. 20 hours ago. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's not it's not fun. I've had to do it multiple times on multiple games, um, and it's just not fun. It's 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 mm -hmm. on a game on a game like this, it almost starts to because there are going to be organic side quests that come out of nowhere, which I'm sure a lot like Grand Theft Auto, and I would attest it to be a little bit more like Red Dead. Um, you start to wonder, like, well, what about like all of the organic 
people that I ran into in the game and how those interactions were shaping my playthrough. And now I have to do it all again. And it's not going to feel as organic, you know what I mean? And like, what if I don't run into them? And I like that alter action. Like in Red Dead Redemption, when you bump into that guy who's got a bad arm on his way to Saint Denis and you have to take him to the doctor. Yeah. If I had not seen that Damn, mission, that was I a would good be one. heartbroken. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. That was my first time going to Saint Denis. And that, I had me this too. Guy, That's, yeah. And he was like, take me, take me. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was a random encounter. There is a chance you didn't take that road going to Saint Denis and, and you would never I have seen that guy. I think he spawned on more roads than you think. Remember on I was going to say, because what are the odds that both of you got it? Of mm. course. Remember when you met... Um, the, in, the, in Red Dead Redemption 1, there was a lady named Bo Bonnie McFarland who owned the, the ranch. Of course. She and was in Red Dead 1. You meet, oh, you just said that. Yeah. yeah right. You meet her husband. He's dead on the beach. When you come across a dead body on a beach, and he's dead, and you find a note on him, and it's to Bonnie saying, we've been lost at sea... I miss you, da 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 da. It turns out that he's that boat and him spawn on any random beach in the game as long as you're near it. You know what I mean? So it almost forced you to run into that scenario. To find it, of course. Yeah. Wow, that's the, interesting. The snake, not so much. The snake, I, w I went up to it the other day. The snake is a reference to Jungle Book, the large snake in the yeah. in the Everglades. Yeah, in the swamp. Um, it was it was really really cool. Um, but I think we're getting a little bit sidetracked now. I think that's everything as far as uh, cyberpunk is concerned before we get our hands on it. Um, Can I ask one question about cyberpunk? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going nomad. Mike, are you going corpo or have you changed your tune? On I that? am. They're going nope, corpo. I am. And Nick, are you sticking to street kid? Yeah, I felt like after I didn't watch my brother play street kid, it would be a disservice for me to then play nomad and you'd <laughs> yeah. have been like why didn't you say yeah good call <laughs> you know? good call yeah so for me yes very much so i've heard after 30 minutes you're able to go almost anywhere um, 30 minutes wow that's fast yeah yeah that's so quick get that prologue out the way and uh i've also heard that cyberpunk doesn't plaster across the screen until eight hours in but that's like eight you're hours like a third of the way through yeah, yeah, but eight hours a little, that point is when the game really opens up. It's a little linear in the beginning, trying to get you through the beginning. Yeah, and yeah, then you've eight got hours. That's not the beginning. That's more than half. I know it's crazy. It's not more than half. Okay, people are reporting uh, now. People like, are reporting hours 17, 17 hours. No bro. one said seventeen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Who bro, said, game. Who said fifteen? I don't remember. I think it was. I shared it. I shared it that's fifth. That that's fifteen with them beelining for it, each mission. I, Straight to the next one. Not having a look. They were afraid they wouldn't finish it before reviews came out, and then when they finished, they were like, "Damn, that was, I have to start this one over." <laughs> yeah, you're probably you right about that. You're probably you right. You probably right. Just take your time, drive around. Like my brother has gone to see like a tattoo guy. I think he was cruising around, talking to people on the side of the street. Who's not in a rush? I'm like, dude, we yeah, waited 15 that's, years. That's how I'm years. playing this game. What I'm going to literally gonna live in my apartment and like go meet some random broads at the bar. Brother, like, <laughs> this, I, I now understand wholeheartedly why Red Dead Redemption lets you walk only in the camp. Mm -hmm. Because the other day I triggered a mission where Lenny asked me to go hunting with him. And for some reason, when that mission started, I could run in the camp. And it looks so silly as I'm running past everything as fast as i could and i realized that if they don't make you walk you won't, you won't walk you just won't That's uh, you very reminiscent sprint. of what i said earlier in the game and i'm or earlier in this podcast about the game i agree you know, like, but i agree i but will I don't, do I don't my best not to that, you know but i don't think that i think knowing that from the article that i sent you earlier that fundamentally if you just do the story you get the quote unquote bad ending we both got the bad witcher ending and it sucked and we if didn't you know play a, that slow or play played, that fast we played it hardcore yeah i will be much happier to know that if i go at this with a completionist uh uh mentality that my ending is going to be rewarded justly so you know all these people <laughs> around the water cooler who are like i beat it in 15 hours and like my guy's head blew up and like everybody was sucking each other off and be like what that's a crazy game but the other idea is that when you do things all the way through 
You might still get oh, everybody oh, oh. sucking each other off at the end. It might Dick's just be a crazy experience. Bro, <laughs> I've heard this game. I've heard this game does not hold back with the amount of dildos that are in the game. Like there are dildos. You'll be just literally dildos. I probably learned everywhere. about that from Yakuza. <laughs> I believe it, dude. <laughs> you forget who's actually making these games, right? Like, these... Yeah. These, these, these the studios. <laughs> I mean, come on. Think about it. They started off with fucking Yennefer and... Uh, what do you call it? Geralt. Fucking yeah. in a Geralt. tub right in the beginning of the game. Oh, yeah. I mean... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I I got That's a good intro to a video game. That's a great intro. I got the bad ending on Red Dead 2, man, and I played the shit out of that game, and I still got the bad ending. I loved my yeah, ending. Red Dead had multiple endings. Mm -hmm. Three. How? What one that. did you get? Oh yeah, I can't. You got that I can't talk. One. We can't talk about that right now. But Mike, in I the don't room. understand why. Oh yeah, Mike didn't finish it. We don't want to ruin that for Mike. I mean, I don't think you'll ever finish the fucking game. I wish you would, <laughs> but I, it's a long haul, I'm 40%, brother. I'm forty percent through my second playthrough. I'm gonna take a picture when I hit fifty. It, it is a. I've got, I've got fourteen hours in Yakuza now, so I'm 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 sailing along there. That's and I think damn. That a Forty-hour game. Nice. That's nice, Mike. That. Good, dude. That's because you got the Xbox, right? You've been able to play mm -hmm. more. But All right, so let's. Them. I've been going back and forth between the Xbox and the PC. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. They let so you let's do talk that. about how you. Let's talk about how you like your Xbox Series X before we wrap this up. Cool. I like it, and Chris can talk about it a little bit because I brought it over his house last week, and he got to hey. play it. Really so, cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm really, really, really enjoying it. I think the experience that I am getting kind of matches the experience I get on the PC hold the fact that the reason i play a lot of my games on the pc is because i could have a show up and watch it at the same time i could do the same thing on my tablet downstairs on my tv but you know i mean it's just the usability of a pc is always what i get more out of the pc you can just do a whole lot more all in one mm -hmm. um i am really enjoying it uh jumping back and forth in between things super quick turning it on very fast really not having any problems i i did I did get one though. I have noticed some strange artifacting in streaming applications sometimes where I don't know yeah. if it's like a lag, but you get like these weird scrambles on the screen while you're watching it and then it'll go back and then it'll come back in and then it'll go back. And I don't, I, I know my brother, experienced a, my brother experienced a strange problem where it, he has his on uh, quick startup mode instead of eco mm -hmm. saver mode. Um, and so his was very hot on either side of the console when he woke up in the morning. And he's assuming it's because it was downloading updates, updates overnight. For sure. But he, something that panicked him and he said, how do I get this to not stay warm when I'm not using it? So I just Googled it and it says a lot of people are putting it on eco saver mode and uh, not having it on instant power on mode, yeah. I think. I noticed right. that the other day when I went and go, I put my hand in front of it while it was off just randomly mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was hot. But... Mm -hmm. I think it's designed to do that. It just it mm -hmm. it's actually trying to cool down the M.2 that's inside of it because those yeah. things get insanely hot. So No, I totally agree. He he was concerned, "Oh, I think there's a problem with the hard drive because I just received an 80 gigabyte update for Forza." I'm like, "Nope, that's a real update that Forza was live with this week and you just have to tag that on as well." He's like, but that's going to put the game at like 150 gigs. I'm like, that's what they were talking about, dude. You know, dude, you'll be able to get like six to seven. 186 gigs. Yeah. God, man. What? And how big's the hard drive? Less than 800, Eight, isn't it? It's 860. Yeah, 860, yeah. It's I've crazy got, I've got games on there and I still have like 20% left. Yeah, you got I mean, three or 12? What did you say? How many games? No, I think I've got like 15. Oh wow! Yeah, Nothing that's wrong nice. With that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Although I got a terabyte mm -hmm. on my PlayStation, or two terabytes on my PlayStation on the external hard drive, and that thing's about full right now. So, but I don't play, uh, you know, three quarters of those games. I could easily turn and burn them, you know, if I have to for the PS5. Yeah, sure. No, I totally agree. All right, guys. So to wrap this one up, it seems like Cyberpunk. <laughs> this is a. This is this is the eve of Cyberpunk. Um, 
No, I don't want to keep everybody uh, just hanging on when we when everybody's you know we've got everything we've said, we've got yeah. everything out that we need to talk about. The Xbox Series X, go get it. It's uh, I can tell you right now that Phil Spencer tweeted today that they are working overdrive to get consoles on shelves for Christmas. Yes, they did. And I'm really hoping that they do. Um, I'd love to see these scalpers get undercut and just stock stabilize and everybody screams because they're like, yeah, I can get one for 500 bucks. And these guys are like, well, I'll, I'll sell it for even cheaper now. Whatever. I was just walking through Best Buys. And it's because like, if I walk in there and I see a 3080 on the shelf, I think I just might grab it. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. And then I might grab it from you. It's, um, it's, it's a bizarre thing, dude. To, Why do you guys get it already? So I can get a 20. <laughs> A 20 series card please Bro, we, the 20 series card will be sitting behind you on the shelf for my yeah be like oh, i love this rtx wait i could get an rtx so, so good could i slap a 20 series and it would improve my sis situation it'll just Absolutely. bottle it'll you, just bottleneck you'd get, shit. you'd get a bit of a bottleneck but the increase in performance would be more than the bottleneck it would justify so it yeah, yeah. Damn, I might just do that shit. <laughs> just go find, just go get that TI that people are buying. People are buying 3080, uh, 2080 TIs for 300 bucks on Facebook. I have just such a up. hard time when I can get a 3060 for 399, you know, brand new. But can you? They're like 750 yeah. right now. Yeah. Are they? 750 is actually pretty affordable for what they are. I thought 750 was affordable, but then I'm like, bro, you're literally buying a 2080 Ti, which is great. For the same price, you could get a 3080 for when they come in stock. I'm like, nope. Don't do that. Nope. Don't do that. Give me that 3080 all day, baby. That's a good podcast. Because I think that, like, I, this is, for me, this is a bittersweet podcast because um, this is like, what do you have to look forward to as a gamer? And I felt like my whole life around this release. Like, what do you have to look forward to other than cyberpunk? Like, that is huge. I'm hoping tomorrow night at the Video Game Awards they we will. get to see teasers for God this of War 2. Yeah. We're in the next-gen gaming generation, right? So we should have a whole lot to look forward to. A I mean, ton. It's only going to get better from here. Now that, now that the consoles have caught up with, with the quality of games must, that we can Xbox put out on the PC... Sony. Xbox and Sony must be fully aware that all eyes are on the Video Game Awards tomorrow night, uh, one day after the release of Cyberpunk. So they have to be thinking, like, what can we, you know, what Xbox exclusive can we put in there? And, like, imagine the pressure on Xbox if, if PlayStation have a trailer ready for God of War, if they have a they trailer will. ready for Project Athena. You know what I mean? It's like. Do. I heard there's well, supposed imagine. to be some huge Xbox news tomorrow as well. They were saying, they were saying that on uh, Kind of Funny today. That there's some big I Xbox it, announcement. I bet, it, I bet it's going to be the announcement of the app to the TV. Greg was saying to manage your expectations, though, because one of the developers said, like, everyone just needs to calm the hell down. We put that tweet out, you know, to get everyone hyped up. We didn't expect y'all to be <laughs> this hype. <laughs> like, calm down. Xbox. Yeah. At least we have them on the Halo release. I mean, we at least we have a firm release like we know it's going to come yeah so we can probably release, expect so. a new trailer for that tomorrow as well you yeah. know i'm sure whatever they've gone if they've gone and said hey we've got it fixed this is what we want to do now i'm sure we'll get something i'm excited are we going to watch that tomorrow are you got are you i'm, I'm going to be playing cyberpunk but i'll i'll put that up on my uh phone next to me while i'm playing cyberpunk yeah, usually i put it up and i watch it but because the live stream is so bogged down by so many users watching it, you don't get that 4K beauty trailers until you go and watch them re-rendered on IGN and things like that. So mm. I will watch it, but not with like all eyes on unless like a God of War trailer pops yeah. up or something like that. But it's always grainy. It's always stuttery. It's all, it's not too stuttery, but it's never as when you watch it back later. You know, we start sharing all of the HD versions of it and you're like, That's look at point. this. That's a real good Because <laughs> I remember... It's so good too, the ones we forget, because we are like a little forgetful crew. And it's like we end up watching uh, or talking about the games and we're like, I forgot about that one. What was that one? Which one's that? And we're like, the one with that thing in it. And you're like, oh, yeah, that was sick. <laughs> yeah, I love how many, all the old games are dope. I want to see that one with the room come out. The one where you're in the room from the top down and there's like some murder or something that oh, happens that yeah, you have yeah, to get yeah, out yeah. of. It's like 13 minutes or something, I think it's called. But yep. yeah. 12 uh, minutes. 12 Nick, minutes. You, Nick, you should see my PC, all my Corsair hardware right now. My entire PC, it's all yellow for Cyberpunk. Everything is yellow. Woo! Yo, grab the my camera and put it on it. Can you can you show it? 
the background to my PC no, is... No, it's uh, not going to... It won't reach. Oh, shit. The background to my PC is this girl sleeping in a high-rise uh, apartment in Night City, and it's overlooking the city, and there's a oh, car flying Oh, that's badass. Uh, did you get that on Wallpaper <laughs> Engine? I'm going to have to jump yeah, on that. I'll dude. go... I'm going to look that up right now. <laughs> so I could get some cyberpunk backgrounds. <laughs> Yo, it's wallpaper exciting. engine's probably gonna crash the stream as soon as I pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope that uh, everybody manages their expectations, goes into this game, and understands that from at least from what I saw, very much like a really, really cool Fallout. So like you walk up to people on the street, and up pops these little button prompts underneath them, and you have conversations. I watched about a minute of the uh, developers playing the game today, and you're sitting in the car. And you look over at the girl while she's talking to you and you look down and you can see your body in the car and you look up and the guy's like talking to you from the front seat like hey are you looking at me buddy and then i saw my brother's nep my brother's son my nephew crashed the motorcycle and when he crashed he tumbled over and you could see his whole body he's like looking down at himself while he's laying on the floor did I you see like, johnny okay. silverhand at all or no no i was only there for literally i dropped the food i told you guys i gotta come yeah. do the podcast He's like, yo, I want to tell you about this. I'm like, I don't want to know. So I got to tell you about this. I don't want to know. And it looked like it was running very good. It looked smooth. I couldn't tell if it was 60 frames per second or not because I didn't play it. That's more of a feeling than a thing you can see. But, um, but it looked good. It seemed good. Graphics were good. I'm not used to seeing... Um, games not on an ultra wide monitor so everything seems so like chunky and Squished, big yeah. i'm like why is the car taking up two-thirds of the screen because i'm <laughs> used to the car being in the middle and then having a nice area around the even when i play assassin's creed like i can almost see that tower over there to the northeast while i'm looking north you mm -hmm. know it's great um and i think that 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 the ultra wide monitors are going to be huge for these new consoles when they when they take off i don't know if they'll i think you're gonna start to see i think you're gonna see ultra wide tvs here at yeah some point. dude because yeah. movies are filmed movies are filmed in the 21 9 aspect ratio anyways so you'll find most movies you find like on netflix and you run them they run at your full you get more of the movie you actually get yeah you i was telling chris about that it's longer it's just it's we they're just no, getting a you slight cut even, off no go go on netflix and pull up uh uh what's the one with sandra bullock um Oh, the blind, the, the one where they're where they can't see each other. Yeah, yeah, yep, okay. yep, yep. You pull that up. It's it'll full screen, like wow, everything, the full thing. That's insane. It's actually oh, badass. Check that out. Hmm. Yes, it is. And you know what else is badass? You guys supporting us. If you'd like to support us, head on over to patreon.com forward slash high input games where you guys can be bronze level subscribers and silver level subscribers can get access to the post show. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this Cyberpunk 2077 broadcast. I hope you guys are as excited as I am and the rest of the team to dive into the Night City. Um, any closing comments from either one of my compadres for the evening? Just be sure to check us out next week because we will have a lot to talk about as we go live next week on Some Wednesday. Juicy content. So. Tons of content, tons of trailers to show you guys, tons of new information, tons of new announcements, tons I of fresh Let's Plays. <laughs> facebook next week i think we will we're gonna go live facebook next week there's one other thing i'd like to do with you guys sometime during the week and that's get a little bit of us playing cyberpunk so get yourselves maybe five hours into the game so that you can replay that five hours on a stream not the whole five hours but feel comfortable replaying the nomad intro for two hours Fair you know, enough. I can show um, you how to use uh, Shadow Play, and you can get a, a really nice recording of it that we can give that we can put up on the stream. I'll do absolutely. the same thing, and yep. then Chris can do it through the PS4. I can. That would be, be so good. Yeah, no, that'd be fantastic. And then we'll have that gameplay thrown up while the three of us talk over the top of it for everybody to check out, and that would just be so good. We'll slice it together for you guys, make a little, little bit of a montage. Um, we'll put a that writing that pops up cool. that says, like, oh, Chris Chris's gameplay, PS4, <laughs> I love that Nick's shit. gameplay, <laughs> uh, Street Kid, Mike's gameplay, Corporate, um, with little PCs in the corner and little PlayStation in the corner. I'm assuming right, like, right away you choose right, what you're going to be. I, I, literally, before you make your character, it's what are you going to be. 
and right. it's 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 difficulty Fuck, what life stoked. path and then make your character <laughs> I'm, right now? I'm getting so excited um, i i might i might wake up at midnight there. and play that shit tonight <laughs> I was wondering, that was going to be my closing question, is obviously Mike and I are playing it after this. Um, Chris, is this something you're going to stay up and enjoy tonight? Or is nah. something you're going to get up early and play in the morning? I got to clear the schedule to come home at 2 o'clock nah, like you do on up. most. Stay up there. No, no, no. Chris be. has a special work situation oh, where on big release days, he somehow <laughs> manages to get off done by 11 a.m. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? He's like, work yo look yeah. i just gotta say as long as no problems happen and this phone doesn't ring I, i'm doing my job correctly is all i gotta say about that as long as basically you can wake up tomorrow and play without any rushing not, out the door not wake up but i could probably get home on a reasonable manageable time frame I <laughs> Legit though, man. I'm not. What? He's like, I'm at first heaven. I go check on one guy. I tell the next guy, I got a serious thing going on today, buddy. You finish this up good. I legit <laughs> I like eleven's my most important meeting of the day. So like, I I could probably push the early guy, but we'll see. That's getting off topic. Either way, I'm very excited. I'm probably gonna wake up at midnight and at least play the intro, but we'll see if I have the energy for it or not. But. Well, I got I got the stash, the supplies, the Red Bulls ready to rock and roll. It's yeah. go time. Yo, man. Well, have fun, guys. For real, man. Enjoy it. Hey. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week for the download of the Cyberpunk from mm -hmm. the backjack of our heads. <laughs> see you later, guys. <laughs> later.